In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about length, angle, and metric. And so this is looking at, uh, in particular, the dot product or the scalar product or uh, the inner product, uh, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, some people will make different differences about those things, but essentially what we want to get to is the inner product, which is kind of the, you know, the the best version of those, I, I suppose you could say. And so we first start with these four, uh, these four axioms here, and sort of say that these are not necessarily uh, sufficient for a dot product, uh, because so we take two 3D vectors multiplied by using the scalar product or dot product or inner product, and we have this. So we are taking the the uh, linear combination of the first one and multiplying it by the linear combination of the second one. And so we take uh, the dot product here of our bases and multiply together our uh, components here. Uh, this would give the length of a 3D vector uh, defined as the square root of a scalar product of a vector with itself as this. And so this would be uh, taking the dot product of a vector with itself. Uh, and this should give the square of the length of the vector, where if you took the square root, that would give you the length of the vector. Uh, and so we see that we have uh, here all these terms that... Uh, are not, uh, you know, just the dot product of one of the bases with itself. So we have the E1 dot E2 and the E1 dot E3 and the E2 dot E3. And this can give negative length and even complex numbers as length uh, if we allow for complex coefficients and bases. Uh, and so to kind of get over this, we introduce the dual vector, uh, which is the complex conjugate of the vector. And we denote that with a the vector with a little star by it, uh, where the complex conjugate of uh, some complex number C equals A plus IB is C equals A minus IB. And so you just change the sign on the imaginary part of the complex number so that when you multiply them together, uh, these two parts here with the imaginary number cancel each other out. And so we just end up with uh, real a squared plus real b squared. Uh, and this makes the scalar product, uh, so we have the uh, v star here dot v, and that uh, just equals the summation. So this is, once again, working in three dimensions, which is, you know, kind of, you know, I mean, you can uh, generalize this to higher and lower dimensions, but since uh, in this video series, I'll be using three dimensions quite often. I use three dimensions as the example. And besides that, it's just kind of easier to show, like, you know, the the sort of matrix form of things without having to, you know, show that it goes all the way to N every time and stuff like that. So, uh, but you, like I said, without you can do this without loss of generality, I guess is sort of the standard way people like to put it in mathematics. Uh, and so we have our E sub I here being equal to the complex conjugate of E superscript I. And so I'm using this formalism here, which actually isn't in the book that I'm following here. But uh, so for the complex numbers, or the dual numbers, I guess, uh, I use the superscript in the components and the subscript in the bases, and then the subscript for the, uh, for the non-dual vectors, I use the subscript in the component and the superscript in the uh, basis, which is uh, pretty standard for uh, for this formalism. Uh, and so that's what I'm using here. And so I'm showing that uh, if we take the uh, dual, which is the complex conjugate of our uh, of our E superscript I, which is the uh, version of the basis that's not in the dual space. Uh, so we take the complex conjugate of that, and it gives us this E sub I. 
And so we have this e sub i dot e superscript j is equal to e sub i dot the complex conjugate of e sub j, uh, where the bases could be complex. And as we'll see, that is the case in the so-called spherical basis. Uh, so using two different vectors, we get uh, this, which is just kind of the same thing as using, is doing it with two of the, or doing it with the same vector here. Uh, and so we can take these e sub i dot e superscript j and gather them into a matrix, uh, which I'm using this g here because that's uh, often standard for uh, metrics. And so, I mean, that's what this is, is the, is the uh, metric, and it's actually a metric tensor. Uh, and I do have a, a quick playlist on tensors if you wanted to learn a bit more about the metric tensor. But uh, that is, you know, what this is, is it's the metric tensor, uh, even though in the book I'm following, he doesn't call it that. Uh, it, that is what it is. And so in 3D Euclidean space with or orthonormal basis, we get this. So our G uh, I J here is equal to this uh, this diagonal matrix with just ones in the diagonals, and that is the Kronecker delta. And so when we have that, we are in 3D Euclidean space with orthonormal basis, which just makes the dot product essentially the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and so, you know, if we had if we were doing the uh, vector v dot with its uh, dual basis v, it would just essentially be, uh, you know, v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and so the length of the vector v, so if we dot it with itself, uh, we just get this. So you often see it uh, written like this with the absolute value. And so it's the dot product of our two vectors here and we take the square root of it and so that's just the v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared and you take the square root of that so it's just the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, then we have the angle between them is equal to this so it's the cosine of theta equal to the dot product uh, over the uh, lengths of both of them here and so we just end up with this dot product up here. Uh, then we have down here the uh, well, the product of our our two vectors with themselves, uh, with the uh, with the metric tensor here, uh, and so in Euclidean space, it would just be the Euclidean metric tensor, which would just you know give us this nice uh, v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared, and so our, our amended axioms are this, which is basically what we had above, except now we have these duals, these complex conjugates in it. And so uh, we're saying it's commutative, it's distributive, it's proportional to the length of each vector. So if we have the alpha here and the beta here, we can pull those out and multiply them by each other. Uh, and it's length squared positive. And so when we do the dot product, we always end up with some positive number. It's always greater than zero uh, for all uh, for all vectors that are not equal to zero. Uh, so when we're only using real numbers, then our uh, our complex conjugates just become equal to you know the the same thing. And so you end up with you know what we uh, in re when using real numbers kind of understand as you know taking the dot product, which is of you know, something with itself, which is just the thing squared because, uh, you know, the, the complex conjugate is just the same because in the complex conjugate, essentially of real numbers, essentially what you're saying is that, uh, the, uh, the imaginary part. So you have the a plus I B you're saying that B is equal to zero. So it's just a plus I times zero. So it's just a, uh, and so that is, you know, sort of what the generalized, I guess, real numbers are. Uh, and so when we're using real numbers, the complex conjugates are just equal to the real number. And so here we can look at our spherical basis vectors, uh, which are related to the unit vectors by this. So we have our e plus one, and that's equal to uh, minus e sub one plus i e sub two all over uh, the square 
square root of 2 and then same thing for e uh, minus 1 except now we have this negative in here and uh, this part is positive but our e sub 0 is just equal to our e sub 3 uh, which we, you can kind of think of as like the uh, the z axis I guess uh, so it satisfies our axiom so these are just uh, things from uh, an earlier video which is just telling us uh, you know about like the linearity of our bases here and stuff like that but then if we look at these axioms here the commutative distributive and proportionality and the length squared uh, so once again we have the uh, multiplication of complex numbers looking like this which will uh, a squared plus b squared will give us a uh, that will give us a positive number. So it is length squared positive. Uh, so when we rotate around the E3 axis, uh, what we essentially get is our E plus 1 is now multiplied by this uh, complex uh, phase factor here. And our E minus 1 will also be uh, multiplied by this complex phase factor. And so when rotated, we're just multiplying by the complex phase factors. Uh, so the dual... Uh, the basis and dual basis for these are this. So on the left here we have our our basis, and on the right here we have our dual basis. Uh, and so we see we're just changing the sign in front of the uh, the imaginary number there. Uh, so the elements of the metric can be computed this way. So we just uh, you know we take the dot product of the complex conjugate with uh, with the non-complex conjugate here and that equals one when we do it with uh, ones here that are not the same we just end up getting zero and so we end up getting our metric as being equal to the identity element which is just uh, the uh, diagonal with ones in the diagonal and zeros in all the off diagonal uh, and so we can get a metric here for our uh, our spherical basis and so we can do the same thing if we have bases that are actually functions and so once again the first ones here just sort of showing the linearity and things like that so then we have the commutative the distributive or they're proportional to each other uh, but now we have this uh, so when we have have the uh, length squared but we're in function space now we have what is called the square integrable uh, over some interval from a to b here and so that's uh, so we have essentially we're taking these squares so just multiplying the basis by each other and we're saying that that is less than infinity and so what we end up having here so now we not only have a dot product defined on our function space we're saying that the uh, functions can uh, all converge uh, or you can converge on every function in this space and that essentially gets us uh, a Hilbert space uh, so the book I'm using doesn't uh, doesn't mention that but that's essentially what we're doing here is when we have this uh, square integrable uh, and you know we have the dot product and we're saying the square integrable that it's uh, less than infinity that we have a Hilbert space here uh, so we have a this is a function space and it's a Hilbert space uh, so a linear combination of the basis functions is just another function uh, so you know that's when we're in function space we're saying that uh you know a function is like a well it not like a it is a vector because you can uh sort of uh get like a basis of functions from which any other function uh can be made as a linear combination uh of those functions multiplied by uh you know some you know some number which uh, is uh, in this case complex so these X's are complex uh, and we can even uh, more generally say that the thetas are complex as well which uh, you know kind of changes the meaning of what uh, an angle is but uh, we I'm not going to go into that here and so an example is if we have this so our our uh, our bases here which are functions are this function here so it's normalized with this 1 over 2 pi uh, the square root of 2 pi uh, but then we have you know these different functions where this k 
changes here and we can make a linear combination of these and then we have this fk here which is uh you know some coefficient and in fact we're saying that it is the Fourier coefficient and so uh, we can make this into the Fourier transform here uh, which play uh, so these uh, you know FKs here play the part of the vector components where these e to the i k theta are the different you know e sub k uh, theta of theta basis functions here uh, and so because the of the integrable square requirement we define a metric as this so we're taking the dual of our uh, function here times our function here and the dual is the complex conjugate so we put a minus here uh, and we're saying that the uh, the metric for this is once again just the Kronecker delta and so is therefore orthonormal uh, but anyway, that is the end of this video. Uh, so kind of the main thing to take away is just, uh, like I said, that we can have this metric that we can have, uh, which gives us uh, sort of a, a more rigorous idea of things like length and angle. Uh, and because of this square integrable, we're saying that uh, everything can converge. And so we're sort of defining a Hilbert space here. Uh, and so those are uh, kind of the takeaways. And I guess what we're saying is that this can be sort of uh, generally stated when we introduce this idea of the dual basis, uh, which uh, are the complex conjugates of the uh, of the basis. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.